Well, if you want to undervolt your i7 14700K or 14700KF to get more performance and to reduce the very high temperature this CPU runs at to make your system cooler, quieter and also run smoother while putting out less heat and preserving the life of your CPU for longer, this is the right video for you. So welcome at the Watson PSUs and welcome at my CPU undervolting tutorial for this i7. Now this is actually gonna work for the i7-14700 and the 14700F as well. Now I'm using an MSI BIOS on an MSI motherboard. We are in the BIOS, but this tutorial is actually gonna work for every single motherboard manufacturer out there. You can cross-reference the settings in my CPU undervolting playlist because I am trying to cover every single CPU and every single board manufacturer. So even if you have a different board like Gigabyte or ASUS motherboard, you can just go in my CPU undervolting playlist and then cross-reference the names of the settings there and uh, you should be able to understand what's going on. I will also just tell you during the video the different names and uh, promise me just one thing. If the video will end up being helpful, you will drop a like and a sub to support the channel, okay? With that said, let's go in the BIOS and let's start undervolting. Okay, so here we are in the BIOS. Now, we want to go in the section of our BIOS that's called overclocking or OC in our case or tweaker or AI tweaker, okay? So let's go into there and now there we will have basically all our settings for our CPU pretty much. First thing we want to do, even though this is not really related to the undervolt, is make sure you have your XMP enabled, otherwise your RAM is not running at full speed. Now you should test this separately, again it's not part of the undervolt itself, but uh, it's just a good reminder to do it. Also the resizable bar option if you have it, make sure it's enabled. So let's actually move forward the tutorial. Now the most important setting is going to be the CPU cooler tuning. If you don't have this, no worries, because I'm going to show you how to do it even if you don't have this. But if you do have this, this is basically, uh, it sets a power limit on your CPU, basically based on your cooler, okay? Water cooler, this is the problem, is the default setting, but it's too much for pretty much everyone. So unless you have a custom water cooling loop or a very, very good all-in-one water cooling, like a 420 millimeters uh, all-in-one water cooler from Arctic, you are going to want to have tower air cooler. So if you have a good water cooler, put tower air cooler. If you have a decent water cooler, put tower air cooler. If you actually have a tower air cooler or a not so good water cooler, trust me, you want to put boxed cooler instead. For my tutorial, I'm going to go with tower air cooler, but really, if you have problems, big problems with temperatures and you can't seem to get them down, just put it to boxed cooler and it's going to run better, okay? First thing is this. Now, let's suppose you do not have this in your BIOS. How do we do it either way? Well, we go into advanced CPU configuration. Over here, we will find something that's called Turbo Boost. And under a Turbo Boost, there's gonna be the long duration power limit. And now this is basically what we wanna change. If we are doing it for performance, so if you're doing this just because you want the maximum FPS out of your CPU, you wanna put all nines into here and just max this guy out to 128 and put all nines into here as well and max the current limit as well. So these four settings, which are long duration power limit, long duration maintained, short duration power limit, and CPU current limit, you wanna basically max them out if you're doing this just for performance. But if your problem is mainly temperatures, you may wanna put 125 into here and uh, 125 into here as well. Now, this is the more conservative options, meaning this is going to be reducing your performance a bit. So a good middle ground if you want to keep your performance in the short range, but uh, be locked after a while, is going to be this. So if I had to recommend a setting for everybody, it would probably be this. So 125 watts as long duration power limit and 253 watts as short duration power limit. After you've done this, if you have a setting that's called enhanced turbo, please disable it, but this motherboard doesn't have it, so we are fine with that, but enhance turbo, disable it. After you've done all of this, which is just really power tweaking, we want to do the actual undervolting. So to do that, we go all the way down until we find our CPU core voltage mode or CPU core voltage. And now we want to select the offset mode in it. And then if you can select the sign, you want to put minus. And if you can select the type, of minus, put it minus by CPU, not minus by PWM, okay? Minus by CPU. Now, once you're here, you wanna go into CPU core voltage offset 
and put 0.05. Now this is gonna work for pretty much everybody. However, if you're really unlucky and after doing this, your PC is crashing and you're getting blue screens, you're in probably in the 1% worst CPUs out there, but that means you need to do this. So 0.03. Leave all the other settings the same, but put this to 0.03. On the other end, if you are a bit luckier than average, you're going to be able to get 0.075. Actually, quite a lot of CPUs I've seen can do 0.075. And if you're the luckiest man alive, you're going to be able to do 0.1. The higher this number, the better just your PC is going to run, pretty much, because it's going to run cooler, quieter, with more headroom on the power limit. It's going to just run better. But the problem is the higher this number, the less the stability. So really, for most people, 0.05 is going to be the sweet spot, but you need to test this. But again, if you're very, very unlucky, 0.03. And on the other hand, if you're really lucky, 0.75 is going to be your friend. And uh, really, there's, there's nothing else you need to change in your BIOS. So tutorial is pretty much over. One last thing, again, in advanced CPU configuration is something you can try if you're trying to tweak for a certain game, is uh, some games run better if you disable hyper-threading. And uh, some games run better if you put zero on the active E cores. This is also going to give you just more temperature headroom. But I do not recommend you do this off the get-go. I think it's something you should really test out on your specific game. But with this mentioned as well, we covered everything that you can do to tweak your CPU pretty much. And so I hope the video was helpful. If you have any kind of issues, please drop a comment. Or even if the video was helpful, maybe drop a comment and thank me. And uh, remember your promise. So if it was indeed helpful, maybe drop a like and a sub. I also cover GPUs on the channel and I do cool budget PC builds showing how to build PCs for cheap and covering Xeons and other strange stuff. So maybe give it a look and hopefully see you guys again. And uh, nothing. Have a good day or good night. Bye bye.